Hi, this presentation is about soil information. It is an overview of which types of soil information exist and where you can find them. The presentation is in two parts, but it's one topic. So after part one, take a short break and then continue as soon as possible with part two to get the full picture on this really useful topic. Not sure why soil information is needed? Think about the amazing diversity of soils around the world. These are pictures from just some of the profiles in the reference collection of ISRIC World Soil Information. It contains more than 1000 soils and no two of them are the same. Also consider the many functions that soils fulfill and the services we are getting from this. Food production, flood regulation, biodiversity and so on. Managed properly, we can make sustainable use of these functions. But if we do not take care, things can go awfully wrong. This image was taken in South Dakota, US in 1936 during a period of severe dust storms that became known as the Dust Bowl. The Dust Bowl greatly damaged the ecology and agriculture in the US and Canadian prairies and tens of thousands of families were forced to abandon their farms. It was caused by droughts, but also by insufficient understanding of the soils and ecology of the plains and how to prevent wind erosion. If they had more soil information and used it, things wouldn't have been as bad. But how do we start to generate and collect soil information? Let's first look at what we call point or profile information. This is where you get your hands dirty. You go to a spot and take notes on the site itself, like the vegetation, information from a geological map and so on. Then you start digging to make a soil profile pit. Sometimes you have to dig a lot. But in the end, you will have a beautiful soil profile, which you can start describing. Describing it involves the following. First, you divide the soil into subsections called soil horizons. A for topsoil, B for subsoil. There is also C for weathered parent material and R for solid rock. Distinguishing soil horizons is done using the best analytical devices you have in the field, your own senses. Then you do a visual soil assessment describing the color, texture, structure and a range of other field characteristics for each separate soil horizon. After that, you take a sample from each horizon. With some expert knowledge, you could make an attempt to classify your soil in the field according to your national or an international classification scheme. Following this procedure, you get a lot of information from just one soil profile. So from your soil profile, you get field data and from the samples you get data on the soil characteristics, which can be determined more precisely in a lab than in the field. In the end, you will have data on the chemical, physical and biological characteristics of the soil you have chosen to investigate. But remember, this is just one point in the landscape. Now, you can only dig so many soil profiles yourself. And many people have done this in the past, so we can rely on existing point or profile information from a wide range of sources. Try searching the website of your National Soil Information Service for a start, or soil institutes at universities. In Europe, there is a rather large dataset called LUCAS, with information from some 20,000 points. And for Africa, ISRIC World Soil Information has compiled a database with a similar number of entries. If you cannot find anything for your area, try searching the ISRIC WOSIS dataset that holds more than 100,000 soil profiles from all over the world. One more point I want to make about point or profile information. It is very important to realize that soils can vary quite a lot over short distances. So how can we possibly get continuous soil information for a larger area and extrapolate from point to landscape level. That's what I'm going to show you in part two of this presentation. But now it's time to take a short break, move around a bit 
and then tune right back in for the second part.